Today I'd like to demonstrate some of the meshing capability for Axiom. Uh, to begin the demonstration, I'd like to look at this curved line structure that's rendered in a multi-layer laminate technology, and we're looking at a, uh, a meandered line on the top layer here. Um, so if we look at uh, how Axiom meshes this, we can pull up a 3D rendering of it, and you can see that in the curved sections down here, Axiom uses a triangular type mesh, whereas in the straight sections, Axiom uses a rectangular mesh. Uh, the benefit of doing this is twofold. First of all, in the curved sections here, unlike a gridded method of moment solver, we're going to be able to greatly reduce the number of unknowns because we're going to accurately, or much more accurately, mesh with the triangular mesh, the curved section here. If we were using a gridded method of moments, we would have to stair-step this with a very, very fine mesh, which would drive up the, uh, the number of unknowns uh, quite dramatically. Um, in the straight sections here, we're using a rectangular mesh, and of course this is the efficient way to do this as well as the accurate way to do this. If we look very closely at how Axiom meshes these sections, we can see that not only is it using rectangular mesh, but it's varying the mesh in such a way that's consistent with Gauss's law. In other words, towards the edge of the connector, we're going to get a much finer or um, closely spaced mesh where we expect current crowding to occur, while in the center section of the conductor, we're going to get a coarser mesh. This will also uh, help us uh, reduce the number of unknowns because we're not finely meshing an interior section where we don't need a high number of unknowns to solve for the um, rather low amount and uh, um, much more easily distributed current in that section there. Um, Axiom's mesh is very fast and it's, uh, it works dynamically with the structures that are involved. So if we go back to our um, drawing over here and add a circular disk, we can see that in the section where the circular disk intersects our line, we've uh, now gotten rid of any of the rectangular mesh because the interaction of the circular disk with our line causes a structure or creates a structure which is uh, very much curved and is more easily meshed with the rectangular uh, meshing. So we can see in here, in this region here, where previously we had some rectangular mesh in the straight section in this area at the top of the meander line, uh, we now no longer have any rectangular mesh and it's totally uh, triangularly meshed. If we go and move the disk down, we can see that Axiom quickly remeshes it and we perturb the mesh just in the area of the disk. In other words, these straight line sections still retain rectangular meshing for our uh, accurate representation of Gauss's law and the uh, reduced number of unknowns in these regions, but where we have the disk interacting highly with the meandered line we go to a, a purely triangular mesh to uh, uh, capture the curved surface here. Now, one of the other things about meshing in Axiom is that it's true 3D meshing and 3D solving of the metal. In other words, we're not going to correct after the fact for uh, finite metal thickness uh, rather than infinitely thin metal and do a correction for resistivity after the fact. Axiom truly meshes the metal in 3D and then solves uh, as such. So, for example, we can look on edge here, and we can see that our structure is a combination of a thick metal line, one ounce copper, and a thin metal line, half ounce copper. Um, we can go one step further and reduce that thin metal disc down to a perfect conductor, where we can see the difference quite dramatically. And when we do this, you can see that whereas the uh, metal plate was roughly half the thickness of the meander line, now we have a perfectly uh, thin or infinitely thin conducting disc here. Now, the reason why we want Axiom to be able to truly mesh the metal is that with high aspect ratio meander lines where the spacing between the line is of the order of the thickness, we're going to get quite a bit of sidewall coupling. And I've created another example to show this. Uh, a little bit more graphically, we have a uh, 
pair of coupled lines that I've created. And in addition to uh, this pair of lines with thin metal, where the uh, lines are infinitely thin, perfect conductors, if you will, um, I've created the identical geometric example, but I've used thick metal lines here. And if we look at the metal lines in cross section, you can see that I'm meshing the lines vertically in the Z dimension using uh, three grids across the thickness of the line. This is that one ounce copper that I showed previously in the meandered line example, but now we're, we just have this simple coupled line structure. Uh, if we look at the results of the Axiom simulation, we can see that as we expect, the difference between the thick and the thin metal lines is going to have a higher degree of coupling with the thick metal lines because of that high aspect ratio, we're going to get quite a bit of capacitive coupling between the two due to the uh, proper meshing in the Z dimension of those thick metals. And in fact, we can go back to our thick metal example and look at the currents along the meshing. And we'll animate this so you can see how the current phases. If we kind of zoom in to this area here, you can see in between the conductors, as well as on the edge of the conductors, that we're getting the current to be moving along the edge and phasing properly with the signal as it propagates down the line. We have, uh, again, we have high mesh, I'm sorry, high current uh, along the edges. We can see this in the Z dimension as well, a uh, nice application of Gauss's law, where we see the low cooler current sections in the middle and very high uh, current along the edges. And this is even more pronounced on the bottom edge where we're actually looking at inside the dielectric, uh, these extremely hot areas relative to the side wall in the Z dimension and the top side uh, with air is due to the higher fields that we would expect inside the FR4 uh, laminate um, because of, again, Gauss's law, the fields are going to be a lot higher where the dielectric constant is, uh, is higher. So, uh, that's a little bit about Axiom's mesh. Um, it's a hybrid meshing that combines triangular and rectangular mesh. It also meshes the metal truly in the Z dimensions so that we can capture some of these vertical effects uh, and get a much more accurate accounting of the coupling due to uh, the Z dimension and get a much more accurate accounting of the resistance of the metal by truly solving Maxwell's equations uh, in three dimensions with three dimensionally meshed metal. If you have more questions about Axiom, go to the Axiom website, www.axiom3d.com, or contact AWR.